All right, any questions on what we just did? Or should we just get in the... Right into the implementation of the facade here. So, all right, what we need in the facade is uh, to take a look at the, at the controller and see what functionality is actually needed and uh, devise the interface for uh, the facade in that way. So we need to get the cards, the scores, and we need to be able to start a new round and hit and stand. That's about it. So let's add functions for that. Ugh, how was that? And this game facade will have the responsibility of uh, aggregating the dealer and the player. So we won't need to create the dealer and the player in the start game class, and we won't need to uh, handle the dealer or the player in the controller. The game facade handles the dealer and the player uh, itself. Uh, we will just try to compile.
uh, get a question here in the uh, the chat. Uh, is it okay for a facade to have low cohesion? Well, the the facade itself should not do that much. As you can see in this facade, it kind of like just pairs stuff together and sends the the request onto its collaborating objects. So you could say that. Uh, there is not much of implementation or complex code here, and that 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 uh, could make it okay to have uh, at least high coupling that you will probably get in a facade because it kind of like takes on the role of of uh, being the spider in the the web, so to speak, and have all these threads out. I don't think it it has really low cohesion because it doesn't really do anything. So, but, but, but you, yeah, you do sacrifice low cohesion. They, they, they tend to have high coupling and uh, low, low cohesion. So, and, and that is the, the purpose kind of like of the, this type. So, uh, that is what you will get. Also a, a good comment. So, in this case, we kind of like get lower coupling in the controller, but we get move kind of like these couplings to the dealer and the player to this facade object instead. And this is a good thing because in our architecture we would like to separate the components as much as possible. So there are uh, possibly even more dependencies in, in total in this design, but all dependencies are not created equal, so to speak. Some dependencies are more uh, are more bad than others, and especially dependencies between these uh, components in the architecture, we should strive to minimize. And exactly, the, de the, the facade we create, we now create, is to remove dependencies from the controller. Remove dependencies, and we also make the controller implementation a little bit more uh, obvious, so to speak. You can't make mistakes anymore in the controller. Before we could create a card and send a card to the, the, to the player or to the dealer, depending on, on just how much time we had to understand what we were supposed to do. And in this design, those mistakes are uh, avoided. And in my opinion, you should strive to have a design that is as obvious as possible, and it should not be be uh, easy at least to make mistakes in the design. So, being able to, to do things in several different ways is not a good thing. And in this case, we we protect ourselves from implementation errors in the controller by having this facade, and that is what you get when you. Uh, implement the functionality in the controller. So this is what you have to work with. So uh, player hit. also need 
this function and this function also. So, oh, something like that. Let's compile it. No, expected a. No, missing return statement. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so let's use this type instead in the controller so we should not send a dealer we should send a game facade a game let's just name it something and a view get the dealer hand That should be it. And actually, this also becomes a little bit uh, easier because this is removed, this is removed. So, we could quite easily implement this facade and we can see that the actual start of the application is now 
simplified. We start a view, we create a view, we, we create a controller, and we create a model. And then we just pair those together and run the controller. And in the controller, we can actually not make any mistakes of adding business logic in the user interface because we can't create uh, access stuff in the player or access stuff in the dealer because those are protected in, inside this facade object. And we could actually also make them invisible from, from the outside so that you can't, you can't even create them. Uh, there is actually one, one uh, uh, a little bit, uh, one thing you can do in the user interface that is not good, and that is that you can show a card. In the user interface, we could, when iterating the cards, for example, in the view, in the hand, uh, we could, uh, for some reason, uh, call show here on the card. And that would not be a good thing to, to make that mistake. Uh, the way to, to deal with this is probably to create a, an interface in, for the card that does not have this show operation. And the only thing you can access is the what color and the value in this interface. That could be one solution for, for this problem. In, uh, I know in C++ you can have these const objects that I have been talking about, and then you can't call any operation that is not constant, that changes the object in some way. So then you would get a compiling error when you try to call show in, in, uh, in the view, for example, if the card was a const object. So any questions? So we have been talking about the strategy pattern, the factory pattern, the facade pattern. And I will take one more pattern before we, before we end, uh, end this. And it is the composite pattern. And unfortunately, I can't really fit the composite pattern into the design of the Blackjack game. Uh, so we need to, to address this in a, a, in a different way. Uh, well, you can't just cram every pattern available into one single application. Uh, so, composite. <coughs> I forgot my notes, it seems. So the problem is, how can we handle a collection of objects as one single object? For example, in the file system, you can select a file and you can delete it. One operation on one object. But you can also select a catalog, a directory, and delete it. And all the files and directories inside that is, are also deleted. So we have this concept of treating a one selection as many objects, so to speak. So if you delete a directory, you treat this single object that is actually a collection of many objects inside of it as one single object.
So the uh, idea is to create a composite object that can handle uh, many objects and to forward any messages to the uh, object it contains. Another example is the, uh, for example, in, in many painting programs you can make shapes. For example, a circle and a, and a rectangle and a and a triangle like this. And we can often select many of them. And we can we can do different things on a single object like this. Rotate or scale or whatnot, but we can also group the object. So we have grouped two objects together here, and we can treat this group as a single object. We can rotate it, and we can we can move it around, uh, and we can we can scale it, and we can also put. A group together with other groups, so to speak. So we can have this uh, also move as a unity or rotate it. And if we divide it again, it is divided into one group with two objects in it and the single triangle of it. So this is what we, we would like to accomplish. And, uh, well, as I said, I can't really fit this into the design of the blackjack game. There is no obvious uh, use of the composite pattern that I have found. So we need to make some other kind of implementation to show this uh, in action. So let's do that. So let's make uh, two kinds of shapes. Uh, we will have a rectangle and we will have a circle. And we will have a, an interface for them <coughs> that lets us, for example, compute the area. So,
So. So uh, we have this uh, we have this uh, shape interface. We have a rectangle, and we have a circle that implements this interface. And the functionality we have is to get the area. And we can create a composite shape that gets the area of anything it contains. And we could maybe create it like. Okay, we get the, the total area of the shapes inside it. Let's call it something like that. So it will not have anything like this. It will not have anything like this. But it should have a collection, for example, a list uh, of shapes. So when we, when we get the area, we just return, iterate through all the objects we have.
something like that and we need a function to add a shape to this collection also Something like that, maybe. And we need a main program to run this stuff from. So, Java main. The area is two because we are printing the the, um, the rectangle, and we could print the circle. We need to compile. <laughs> we get pi, and we can now create also a composite. And there we get 
the sum of the two. And you can create other other, other type of composite uh, objects that maybe uh, takes away the area instead, so you can have a rectangle with a, with a hole in it, so to speak, uh, and implement another type of composite uh, shape. And you can also, of course, add a composite into a composite here, because the composite fulfills, implements the eye shape interface, so there is no problem of creating another composite object and put it inside another composite object and so on and so forth. And this is as you, you probably understand, it's, it's very powerful, but you can also make mistakes when you use it. So if you, for example, do do this, what would happen? We take the composite shape and we put it inside of itself. What will happen when we call the the, uh, try to print the area or calculate the area. Well, it will try to uh, calculate the area of the first object, and maybe that's the rectangle, I don't really know, but we can pretend so, and that it will be fine. It will try to calculate the circle area, and finally it will try to calculate the area of itself once more. So we win a, we'll end up in this kind of loop once more and inside of it it will calculate the area of the rectangle and the circle and then itself once more and so on and so forth. And what will happen if we do this kinds of never-ending self-calls? It will crash and why will it crash? Yeah, it will get too big. And what will get too big? Memory consumption. And what kind of memory consumption will be? Stack. The stack. Exactly. We will get a stack overflow uh, as we got here on the in the chat. So, do you know what a stack is? Yeah, it's a, a type of program memory, and it's the memory that is used for function calls. So whenever you call a function, a amount of memory is created on something called the stack for the local variables and stuff in, in that function. And when you return from the function, that memory is freed once more. So the stack grows as you call functions, and when you return from a function, the stack uh, decreases in size. But now all we do is add, 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 add. And the stack memory is not that huge. Um, you can probably set it in some way because in some applications you, you probably need to be able to make these kind of deep nested calls. But um, as this will never end, we will most certainly run out of stack memory. And we will do so uh, quite fast. I, my guess is that we have one or two megabytes of stack memory in the Java virtual machine. Uh, so let's try it and see what happens. Yeah. We got a lot of exceptions. And I hope we maybe could see one. No. So we get a printout for each each call here anyway, and the console window did not um, have such a large buffer. And maybe we could increase the buffer size and see what happens. Six hundred lines. So That did not help either, but if you 
really, really fast, maybe I can break it. <laughs> there we had it. Stack overflow. So those mistakes are easy to make use in the composite uh, pattern because it's not always that obvious uh, that like we had in our example it is very easy to to have an object deep inside this hierarchy and you, then you happen to add it somewhere else and uh, it's not that easy to spot so it's a very pow powerful uh, thing but it is also uh, something to use with care. So, any questions? No? As I have been telling you, it's actually probably not the, the hard part of the using patterns are not understanding the patterns itself, but it is this Okay, I have this specific problem in my application. What pattern should I use? How can I abstract my problem to a suitable level and find a pattern? Look at that solution and then make a specific solution from the pattern that suits my needs in my application. That is the hard part. Uh, another thing that is quite hard is to devise these interfaces in a good way, especially if you do it uh, up front, so to speak, finding the interface for the for the um, the new game strategy here, for example. Maybe it's not that easy to just sit down and think about the problem and then come up with this interface. In our case, we we did it in the opposite way. We had implementation, specific implementations that we could take a look at and we could derive the interface from, from those implementations instead. And there is always the risk that when we add a new type of, uh, a new way of starting the game, the interface will need some change in some way. And that is always a little bit, uh, a little bit of, of work to do those changes and find the best interface possible. Uh, so, do, do not be afraid to, to kind of like mix the strategies of designing first and implementing second, or implement first and designing afterwards. In some cases it is uh, almost needed to have some kind of concrete experience with the implementations, at least one or two, to be able to find these good interfaces anyway. Yes, uh, I don't have anything more to say really for today. Uh, tomorrow we will take a look at the, uh, the exams the, or the exam example uh, questions and uh, discuss them and think about them. So if you have not done, already done so, take a look at them. And I will be seeing you tomorrow. Bye bye.